Hello, how's it going? And welcome to the Minus Four podcast for Game Week 23. I'm joined with Killian and Patrick, and unfortunately, Aidan isn't with us tonight, but we're going to have a good wee episode here, hopefully. Um, how are you doing, lads? Very well, thank you. All good, all good. Good stuff. Happy enough with Game Week 22? Uh, happy- yeah. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a. I suppose a lot of people who had uh, Rashford triple captained or maybe a bit of Bruno going on really benefited from game week uh, twenty two. We'll we'll have a look at the teams starting off with yours, Patrick. If you want to talk us, yeah, sure. Um, so I uh, happy enough this week. Seventy three points at the minute, not including the the bonus points from tonight's games because we're recording this at about half ten on a Wednesday night just after the 2-2 draw between Leeds and Man United and um, I think I might go up to about 77 points in the end so happy enough with that according to the statistics on uh, live FPL it should be another green arrow for me so you really can't argue with that smaller than most uh, because I didn't have the triple captain on Rashford so I only got the 40 points from him Um, but yeah Apart from him, a few disappointments in the team. Ederson and De Bruyne with one point each. It was very disappointing, but I have to keep them for the double game week now coming up. Uh, the star of the show in my team is, of course, Karen Matoma with a nice, clean 11 points. Second week in a row, he's got a double-digit haul. I'm absolutely delighted to have him, and I'm glad I got him in. You know, despite all of the influences telling me that uh, I probably shouldn't because of the uh, blank game week coming up, I'm uh, I'm glad to be reaping the rewards of a low owned Matoma because I feel like after the blank he's going to be probably one of the most owned players in the game. What did you? I suppose you didn't even triple captain Rashford, but he still returned a lot of points for you, so you'd be happy enough there. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to. Uh, harp on about this but the triple captain isn't really that great a chip if uh <laughs> if, if i captain the same guy you're only getting you know a couple more like one more set of points like you know than you normally would it's not like you're getting three times as many points as i am so mm. not the worst I'm glad i captioned rashford yeah. I mean, look, generally happy enough, considering the average points as it stands is around 37. I mean, I think a lot of uh, FBL managers this week in particular will have two or three players who really performed really well and then a few twos and threes. Yeah. We'll move on to your team, Killian, to see how you've done. Yeah, so I would be one of those players only for Rashford. I had uh, almost wipes across the, the board, blanks across the board, apart from Ganonto and Shaw. Yet it wasn't, it wasn't uh, good as far as any of the matches that I would have been following there. Um, again, Halep, Kinluya, Rashford was able to do something. And then uh, we Willy Ganonto pulling out the goal there against United as well. Uh, met him nicely. And I think Shaw then was just a uh, clean sheet points from game one. But I suppose 86 isn't really a score that you should be like disappointed with. But am I disappointed that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players blanked? Of course, um, but no, still, still happy. I think I actually get a green arrow um, this Definitely. week. Definitely. Um, I think I have ninety something now with bonus points added to Rashford, and uh, I think Ganonto might get uh, some as well. So I should get up to ninety, ninety-one maybe. Um, so yeah, I'm happy. Like I'm happy with it. Um, Again, yeah. I haven't had a green arrow in quite a while. There was a few weeks there where it looked like I was forever for in the red. But um, no, the, the, this week now kind of saved me a good bit and pulls me closer towards you lovely gentlemen. Well, you know getting, what it was, Kelly? You know what it was? You started picking good players. Jesus, I'm a fucking board, not bad full players there. And still <laughs> don't do fuck all. <laughs> Am I right in saying no? Did Jensen score there recently for uh, for uh, Brentford? Jensen obviously? did. Jensen yeah. did. Not yeah. Jensen. Yeah. <laughs> Jensen, not the Jensen. Days, the days when I had the Jensen and Jensen team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you no. Go. Um, he no, did. you'd be he happy did enough him. with uh, Willie Gnanto as well. I know you were. Everyone was kind of talking about him in the last mm. episode. I actually brought him in as well, which moves us on to 
yeah. to my team. But the funny thing is, I didn't actually start him. I um, I kept him on the bench. Willie Bug. So yeah. Willie Bug was on the bench. Unfortunately, I don't mm. know. I just didn't feel. I didn't really back him. I suppose. So I'm actually really happy with this week. Yeah, the lads were um, congratulating me before we actually started the stream <laughs> on uh, how well I done this week. Where so we? Very much. <laughs> <laughs> no, but look, same as yourselves, just the likes of Rashford, Kane, and Kepa. About three players just really pulling through, and then the rest were, you know, a two, three pointers. Almiron really letting me down. And then the double Newcastle defence kind of uh, didn't go well either. But look, as I said, no bonus added or the triple captain points as well. So really, really happy with that, I think. Um, what do you think, lads? Yeah, I like your team. I, I think uh, Almiron, it's time for him to leave the team now. I think yeah. he needs to go for me as well, but I think uh, he might just get one more stay of execution because I actually had Martial in my team as well. What a disaster that was. Yeah, yeah I know. I know. Did yeah, you have him start? I did. So he didn't even get any points. At least we got a suck. I actually get Almiron coming off the bench for me. So can't get rid yeah. of him. Yeah, I think he'll definitely be going, particularly with the fixtures that are coming up in Newcastle Blanken pretty soon. Yeah. Almiron's definitely he was I was actually thinking of taking him out this this game week, but um I actually didn't, so um Yeah. Take it, we'll move of, on to the Reddit uh, round there, Patrick, will we? Yeah, let's uh let's jump into some of the the, the headlines and stolen some memes. Headlines here. So what do we have here? Arsenal, Everton, Wolves, and Liverpool double game week in twenty five. Killian, what are you That's, reckon? It's gonna be juicy. Um, we, we talked last week. I kind of brought up the. Of course, we were looking towards game week twenty five la- last week. And um, Aidan, if you if you haven't listened back, there's a there's a shorter clip of Aidan explaining it completely up, and it's very worth listening to. But this tweet came out then, and it completely changed the dynamic. Uh, there was talk of using the free hit last week. Uh, I was thinking about doing it. I got shot down, but this kind of changes a lot of things. Uh, it's quite a juicy little week too, though. I suppose now, it's important to note about the game week 23 double as well, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, but, Imme- uh, Im- immediately from that there, the... The big thing is Arsenal have a game, a double game week in 25, mm. 23 and 25. So I think that should be our number one priority now, getting f- at least three, well, three are definite Arsenal players in. And mm. which three is going to be key for, you know, rank games? See, that's the thing. It's known whether to kind of, what position to take them from either, because I suppose, who, who's the, who are the double for 23 uh, just to confirm, Arsenal uh, have Brentford and Manchester City at home, and Manchester City have Aston Villa and Arsenal. That's double game week twenty three. Okay, so, um, yeah, I mean that Arsenal have are happy out, to be honest. So it's what it's known which players to take what positions. Are you confident they're going to have a uh, strong defense for them games? Again, I'm not too sure. City coming in. That might be a 50 50 with banking, but then again, Brentford have been pinging in goals quite a bit lately. Yeah, it's not a not so, an easy fixture, is it, Brentford? No, no. Um, I think you'd be looking say, at attackers then for 23, wouldn't you? As much as you I'm can, 25, I would say. I think I'm Arsenal, yeah. Arsenal attackers. I have Ben White in my team, and I'm actually yeah. worried about Ben White getting a benching at some point soon. I think he looks he gets taken off early quite often in these past few games. I think against yeah. Man United got hauled, hauled off because he was on a yellow card. But in the other games, I don't think he's actually made... He's only played a couple of 90 minutes since the World Cup. So I can see Tommy Asu getting a start in one of the next two games, which makes mm-hmm. me want to you know, take him out and go triple up in Arsenal attack. Yeah, I can definitely see yeah, us I... captaining a Arsenal player, by the way, in game week 25 yeah. with Leicester Ooh. away and Everton at home. We talked quickly yeah. about uh, Nketiah last week. This could be the... The prime time to be taking them in, then do you think? The only worry with Enketia, I reckon, is the the fact that Gabriel Jesus is there eventually. Mm. Like he's uh whenever Gabriel Jesus is fit again, um, it looks like it's probable that Enketia would be a bench player then. Uh, yeah. The update on that is that 
this week 25th no this week uh, we did see a video posted from gabriel jesus's trainer about him out there back on the pitch doing some runs yeah that doesn't mean much i mean he's just i think he had surgery didn't he or like a small like knee surgery or something so he's he's, he's yeah. only really just back on the pitch now I think for this double game week, Nketi is going to be fine, but it remains to be seen whether or not he's going to be back for one of the games in game week 25. So maybe that's something yeah. people should bear in mind. Definitely lots to consider, and we might bring this up later, maybe about maybe Arsenal and Wolves and Liverpool as well, whether we want to kind of you know go down the road of potentially bringing some of them players in. Hmm. Moving on uh, to the next slide, let's see what we have on the Reddit round. So this is one, I don't know who found this one, so... Spurs face seven of the bottom eight Premier League clubs in the next nine top flight games. Now, Tottenham don't have any double game weeks coming up, but they do face seven of the bottom eight uh, uh, Premier League clubs. Would you just be tempted to bring in any Spurs players then? I know they're not in great form, but what do you think? Yeah. I'd be, temp- I'd be tempted to look at Kane again. Mm. Um, because, I mean, win or lose, he always has a good chance of pinging one in. You know, a bit pricey though, yeah. Killian. No, he's a bit pricey, but I, I, I'm. I think he might be worth it for the next wee bit. You know, yeah. um, because I think I'm. The old Kevin De Bruyne is kind of. I think he's lived his uh, life on my uh, my team now, so that would he's be a good favor a wee bit. Well, that's it. There's a good bit of good chunk of money will come out of him now too. Um, I don't know if yeah. it's a direct transfer or not no you um, need to do two with de bruyne yeah. if you want to downgrade him yeah but um yeah no i'd seriously be be looking at a spurs player maybe more than likely kane but we'll see how it goes last 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 season i took in kane and he was playing absolutely out of his mind and i took him in and he did absolutely nothing <laughs> that's always the way though isn't it gotta love fantasy no, yeah. well, well, shit. you gotta look at the recent form and Kane like he's only really blanked a couple of times all season mm. he's sort yeah, of he's pretty consistent on, he? a, on any other year if Haaland wasn't in the league he'd be the top scorer and I'm yeah. really glad to have got him back in when I did because he just chipped away he chips away he's yeah. never really yeah, I'd, I'd agree Patrick he's, he's such an asset to have you know yeah. I, I think he's well worth having him in you know I'm glad to have him and keep him now over the next few, despite the fact he doesn't what, have any double game weeks. What about any other Spurs players? There's no one really else that stands out, is there? I know you had Kuliszewski, I can't even say his name, in there at the start a couple of maybe four game weeks ago, but there's no really other Spurs player. Son really isn't in Son's not doing form. it, no. Mm. No. No. There's the defence as well is very shaky. I think Lloris yeah. is now out for six to eight weeks with an injury. So that probably yeah. weakens them. Or in some people's eyes, that might strengthen them, to be honest, because uh, he's Something been in really bad form. Like... He's been in, you know, he thought he was quite good at the weekend, but before that, he had a few rough games. Um, so I don't know. If there was any defenders, I mean, Perisic, oh, Perisic is going to, you know, get a double-digit haul at some point in the next few game weeks, but it's... It's trying to find that right one to bring him in. Or so you think? Yeah. Well, he de- he is. He always he he will. But then the next three, he might get nothing or not even play. Yeah, so. he was way on unpre- too unpredictable for me when I had him in. You know, it was a case of he would blank two game weeks in a row, then he might score fifteen points off the bench or something like that. So it's just really yeah. hard to call it. Killian, you did say there earlier about potentially taking De Bruyne out in order to fit Kane in. Yeah. Uh, we'll move on to an interesting graphic here with uh, De Bruyne versus Mares. Maybe it's one thing taking De Bruyne out to try and take Caden, mm. but could it be a straight swap for Mares? He's flying at this weather. He's been playing very fucking well now. Um, there you go. But your first. See, uh, I don't know because I mean left. City City are in good form, right? And but they're not performing as well as they were before Christmas, uh, by mm-hmm. any means, mm-hmm. I don't think. Um, okay, Haaland banged in a hat-trick there a few weeks ago, but like when you take that aside, all in all, they haven't been playing ultimately well, mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. think. So anyway, I, I'm not saying you think the same, but um, but maybe Mares might be a, a good wee swap, even just to kind of test the waters or something without having to commit to... 
someone as expensive as Kane or or, or so on. Yeah, but, for the double yeah, game that, week especially. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not as convinced though, funny enough, because yeah, I agree with you. Like, definitely, at this point in time, I would go De Bruyne out, Mares in. But I think I would rather load up somewhere else and potentially stick to more Arsenal midfielders and maybe a Wolves or an Everton midfielder. I'm just not convinced with City, as you said. Mm. They're just a bit all over the place. And the way mm. Pep is with his players, what do you think, Griffin? Yeah, so I know a lot of people, and this was a move I was considering doing, actually took De Bruyne out. Uh, to get Bruno in for the double that he's just had um, which would have been a good move in hindsight but the problem is now that you're left with the dilemma of whether or not to get rid of Bruno in and get De Bruyne back in I think that's what a lot of people's plan was to do the hokey cokey to take De Bruyne out (laughs) and then bring it back in straight after Bruno Man United you know have you know good fixtures over the next two but then they blank whereas City do have a game in 25. So I think some people were considering maybe going from Bruno to Mares now for this week to try and catch the double. But I just worry that he's going to get benched in at least one of these. I think he might play a one yeah. and get benched in the other. Just have a it's gut feeling. It's always the case, isn't it? Yeah. City. Just because of he, can't, he got taken off at about 55 minutes in the last game. Didn't play well. I think uh, there's a rumour that... He, uh, Ep was quite um, down on him after the halftime perform or the first half performance, so I could easily see him getting benched in the next game. But then you know he might come off the bench and score, uh, or you know play the Arsenal game. It's it's hard to know with uh, Mares. Whereas I think De Bruyne, he did get benched against Spurs for some reason, but when he came on, he was mm-hmm. the star player, and like you could tell, you yeah. know they really missed him not having him in the starting lineup. Pep, I think. Mm-hmm will probably pick De Bruyne for the next two games, I think. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I think he will, but I don't know, like a lot of people are, are thinking of taking him out, especially with, with the, I don't know, the, the price he is and all. I suppose maybe moving on to maybe going back to the maybe, I suppose the main topic of discussion in this game week is the double game week 23 and mm-hmm. 25. So like, I suppose, let's forget about the whole switcheroo that could have happened between Bruno and De Bruyne, and let's look at the the fixtures. Everton Wolves. Are you thinking of any of them play, players? This is the game week twenty five fixtures. This is game week twenty five, but yeah. we're talking maybe game week twenty three first. We'll have a look at them fixtures. So, any fixtures stand out there for potential players who just might bring in, maybe considering about the game weeks that are coming up, the double mm. and twenty five as well. Uh, Patrick, well I suppose coming into twenty three, you're going to be kind of. Uh starting to rotate out if you aren't planning on using your free hit and you aren't planning on using a, a wild card you need to start thinking seriously about rotating out the for most people it's four players i think a lot of people have six for me newcastle <laughs> yeah I, I was on five um it's newcastle arsenal and brentford and who's the fourth one uh not arsenal uh it's newcastle brighton. man united brighton and brentford that's it sorry sorry yeah so a lot of people's teams have quite a few of those assets. So when you're going into this, you kind of want to score at least two of them matches off because you're obviously not going to fucking rotate everybody out on the same day kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. So like, say, taking those team, those teams aside, I don't know, I'd be looking at Chelsea for this one um, as possible kind of way of getting a few points in this week. Of course, you have your uh, your city as well stacking up, but um, that's a given anyway. Um, yeah. But you know, I think the Chelsea match might be a good wee good wee shout to get a few points, or even the Wolves versus Southampton one, um, coming off a massive uh, win against Liverpool. Maybe they could potentially bring out a few points, but I'm not too sure. What are you thinking yourselves? On what you said, the. Um... <laughs> The Chelsea defence is probably a good shout to get on at the minute because I think they play in 20... They play. They definitely play in 25 and there's going to be a blank in game of 28 as well and I'm pretty sure Chelsea are almost certain to play in that. So mm. it's it's a long-term hold, a Chelsea play, a player who you know, you know you're going to be um, keeping for those two game weeks whenever you might have to swap other people out. Mm-hmm. The obvious 
Chelsea players is Kepa if people don't have him. I have Ederson, so I, I, I think I'm not going to take him out ahead of the double game week, but in hindsight, I really should have just gone with Kepa right from the the start of the World Cup because he's been, retur- he's been returning the points. He hasn't even looked that good, but he's just done enough to get to the the bonus points and the, the the at least three saves in matches. What do you think, Darren, on uh, Chelsea players? Yeah, no, I completely agree. I mean, I've had Kepa in now for the last four or five, four weeks, four or five weeks, I'm sure, I think, and he's been been doing really well, like, kind of nearly touching eight, nine, ten points most games. And I even mentioned before we came on was Cucurella. Yeah, are you going to um, play him this week, for God's sake? <laughs> yeah, I pro- probably want to start playing him. I yeah. have him on the bench for the last four game weeks, and he scored, like, six-plus points. You're going to start so, playing um, him just whenever he starts I getting benched himself for Chilwell? need to start playing, playing with him, yeah. Or playing him even. Um, <laughs> play with him, huh? said, yeah, I that right. He was in love with. Who was it? Casemiro last week. Now he's on restart. about playing with somebody else this week. Jesus. God, the randiest podcast on Spotify, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, moving on. I think what Killian said is very, very interesting with the fact that we all nearly have about five to six players, be it United players, Newcastle players, maybe a Brighton player, that just aren't really. Well, they're not going to get us any points going forward, really, because they're blanking. So, are we considering a free hit, Patrick? Or no. are you are you planned enough to be able to take them players out and take some other players in? No, uh, I'm definitely not free hitting in game week 25, <laughs> even okay. with the new double game weeks, because the the players that I'm going to bring up the 25 fixtures here. So yeah. the 25 uh, doublers are Arsenal, Everton, Liverpool and Wolves. And we're already going to have three Arsenal players after this week. That should be our number one uh, priority, by the way, getting three Arsenal players if you don't have them already this week because yeah. of the two doubles coming up. If I had to ask you to, uh, to rank the Arsenal assets, so who would be your top three Arsenal players? I think considering the fixtures, considering they're playing City, I wouldn't be going near any goalkeepers or defenders. I would probably go number one, Odegaard, even though he didn't really do much uh, this week. I'd mm-hmm. go number two, Martinelli, and I'd go number three, Saka. That's my opinion. I, um, I'll i get your opinion on that as well, Killian. but I, I think that Martinelli is probably way down the list of priorities for me because... Really? Of Trossard coming into the team. Okay, good point. He uh he got subbed before the sixty minutes the last game, and if he keeps getting subbed at that time, obviously that's not ideal, and most likely you know he'll be getting the odd benching. I reckon if Trossard keeps you know putting in performances off the bench, what do you think? Would you be taking him in then? Definitely not Martinelli. No. No, Trossard, would you take Trossard then? No, no, Trossard's a... The, both of them make each other worse assets because they're going to rotate <laughs> with each other. Whereas yeah, Odegaard and point. Saka are always most likely going to start. I can't see either We've of them We've never got your benched. rating, Patrick. What's your top three? Starting with number one. Well, okay, at the minute, uh, the, my top player is probably Odegaard, then Saka, and then Nketiah. Okay. Mm, but the problem with in- Nketiah until Jesus comes back... And then I'd probably go for an Arsenal defender. <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> yeah, but for now, well, you know what you reckon? For now and Katia. Um, well, I have three at the moment, and I'm not particularly happy with them. <laughs> I've been looking for an opportunity to get rid of Ramsdale for a few weeks now, but there's so many holes in the rest of the team that I just kind of need to suck it up with them. Uh, plus, my backup keeper at the moment is Danny Ward, so you can't really... <laughs> Ooh. Um, Come on. Saka has been on my team since the very first game week, and do you know what? He might have a few blanks every now and again, but he does like deliver fairly well. He's been playing very good. Uh, probably either Udegaard or Inketia. Then I don't know which one it would be second or third. And sure, if you had to go for a, a defender, like I have Salib at the moment, but I'd be look, more looking at White. Um. Mm. He's just with cheaper. That potential. I don't know. He's a wee bit cheaper, like, and it gives you more avenue elsewhere. But definitely, I think the midfield is kind of it's just where Arsenal are going to be picking up points from, to be honest. Um, and if Inketia does seem to take it out of the bag, so I'd say Saka, Inketia, and uh, Odegaard would be my three now. 
there. Yeah, I mean, you never know. I mean, like they they are playing Leicester and Everton in game week twenty five. But I mean, Leicester and Everton are maybe a bit of a different beast now as they were maybe a couple of game weeks ago with yeah. Sean Dyche coming in for Everton. And I think you know, look at Leicester at the weekend. They were playing. <laughs> they were playing in an FA Cup final. Yeah, they I mean, won we seen... uh, four two against Villa. Was it? Yeah, both of these fixtures were the the inverse of them. Was at the weekend there, and uh, Wolves yeah. and Everton were the teams that won, and yet. You'd reckon that we'd probably want to bring in three Liverpool players if we were going to three free hit in twenty five. What do you reckon then, Patrick? Though, like, I mean, you're you're going to be we're we're talking about taking out, you know, our Man United assets or Newcastle assets and maybe Brighton assets and slowly trying to maybe, yeah. you know, dilute the team with some, you know, potential other assets that no one else has. Any Everton Wolves players, Liverpool players that you're thinking of? Me, yes. I think um, Tarkovsky is probably a good shout for Everton just because of his sort of goal threat. Um, he's probably the best defender I would pick out of from uh, Everton. And we know Dyche, that's his priority, is a solid defence. So you yeah. reckon that he is going to pick up the odd uh, clean sheet. He might get one in these two games against Aston Villa, perhaps, at home. Arsenal away might be a different kettle of fish as opposed to their their home fixture that they won at the weekend mm -hmm. wolves players i don't know I, I wolves have looked pretty good in defense but i don't know if i trust them yet i've got hugo bueno but he got benched at the weekend which is very <laughs> annoying because i need yeah. him to play in this double game week because you know he's he's going to be playing because i'm going to have the three players i'm probably going to have on the bench are going to be rashford trippier and matoma so I'm going to need Bueno to step up and get his starting place back. Hopefully, we'll see at the weekend where he gets benched again, but uh, he's someone who a lot of us probably have already and will be hoping does something in this game. I actually have Patterson as well for Everton, so if he okay. can if he can get back to fitness in time, that'd be great. Um, I don't know if he'd actually start when he comes back because Coleman played quite well. Um and then yeah. Liverpool, maybe Killian might want to talk us through your thinking. If if you were going to free hit, which which Liverpool boys would you bring in? Oh, fucking none of them. Um, <laughs> I don't know. There's always the, oh, will I take in big Darwin Noon so he can smack the crossbar a few times and make it look like he's a good footballer and then missing about 30 shots. But He might score. He might. <laughs> That's the thing. He might score. You never know. Um. I'll be honest, going into this double, I don't even think I would take a single Liverpool player. Um, you have to, though. If you're free-hitting, then in a well, double game if, week, then if you, have to go, you have to get if, Liverpool players. If I was to free-hit, that's if I'm free-hitting. Free if I free-hit, yes. I haven't figured out who yet. Probably Salah, uh, and then maybe Big Nunge. But we'll see. If I'm not... I mean, looking at the Liverpool fixtures for that game week, we've seen Palace kind of... There are no pushovers the last few weeks. All right, they haven't been fantastic, but they don't take shit, you know? They, what, three weeks ago now against uh, against United, going into everybody's like, ah, yeah, they're going to mop the floor with them all this. They stood up for themselves, whatever. I don't think they'll lie down, especially with Liverpool not playing particularly fantastic. And then their second play, uh, second game is uh, Wolves, who they've already been uh, ashamed by uh, in the last week. So I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't be fairly confident in taking in maybe Salah for getting a wee pick, um, but I don't think so. As far as Liverpool players going, what about no. what about Trent? We wouldn't punt on him. I mean, like look, I, look, look at the potential upside of having Trent. Well. There is the potential upside, yes, but myself and Alexander uh, Trent have not had a great relationship this season <laughs> in the form of him doing sweet FA for the first 10, 12, 13 weeks. Um, but e even then, he, he wasn't playing fantastic even right up to Christmas. I didn't really watch him much in the World Cup. I don't know how, much, how well he played or whatever, but he I don't know. I suppose... Okay, Liverpool could get a clean sheet, though. Trent might get an assist, all this, yada, yada. But they're all big ifs. None of them are really kind of assured 
I suppose it's, it's the right it's word. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Because like, if you were free hitting, you'd be thinking to yourself, "Oh, you know, definitely bring in one or two different like players." But there's no one really standing out, and the price of them. I I think I'll be looking at slowly trying to bring in. I don't know. I'm kind of looking at Ruben Neves. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. I was, was going to say he's. You know, just they're playing Fulham, Wolves, and Game Week Twenty Five in Liverpool, and like anything good that Wolves does, he seems to be involved in it when he's on his game. Um. And maybe try and get a wee Everton defender in as well. But I suppose it's all about being tactical with your transfers now. If Absolutely. you're not going to free hit. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So this brings us to the best edition of the yeah. podcast. We're moving on to Killian's Corner. Killian, what do you got for us this week? Hello. Yes. Uh, welcome back, guys. Last week we covered oh, uh, we Christian Norgard. He didn't score, but he didn't blank. So if you did go with him, you're welcome. I did not. <laughs> thanks for sure. This week, we're going back to an old classic. I'll take you back to game week eight, where we kind of had just started taking in picks. I think I wasn't long after joining the whole podcast, to be fair. And one of my random arse picks was uh, Joao Polina. And I got laughed at quite a lot while I was making that pick. I got bet a fiver that if he scored, he'd give me the fiver. And he went and scored. I remember sitting in work and then all of a sudden, oh, Polina scored. <laughs> so that's how you know I can be trusted here with this pick. He has a good matchup coming into uh, game week 23, depending on how you look at it. He's a CDM, but he scored three goals this season. That's pretty impressive. I got told, oh, he's CDM, he won't do anything, he might get the odd assist. Scored three goals this season. That's not too bad. The man makes 34 0.52, don't forget that 0.02 added on to the end there, passes per match. That means he's good on the ball, except when he's crossing and he's got a 0% cross accuracy. I know I'm trying to let you, uh, can I encourage you to pick him? Most of those passes just, are back to the keeper, by the way. Yeah. Hello, sorry. <laughs> there was some radio <laughs> interference there. I don't know what was going on. Um, he's also an absolute weapon, all right? I think that trust, was fair enough. Trust me on that one. The reason why I say that is because he loves yellow cards. This man challenges you without a second thought. He's been suspended already this season <laughs> for having too many <laughs> yellow cards. And it was actually, he got the fifth one on the week that he scored. <laughs> so There you go. Um, but yeah, and as I said, this man has a 100% chance to score after I recommend him. Well, Look at I mean, I'm just looking, uh, I'm, I'm looking at his me. name. I'm looking at his name there, uh, Joe I, Polina. Okay, did, so... Did, did you draw my keyboard, that on the top of the letter? My keyboard, uh, <laughs> can we go back there for a second? My keyboard doesn't have this, and the font does not copy and paste this in. So I took creativity, and I drew that accent myself. It's very That's well how done. Dedicated. Like, That's it's, how it's dedicated. A, it took me 40 turns to get that one. <laughs> it's a Portuguese uh, father. He is Portuguese, isn't he? He is, yeah. He is, Darren. That's a good observation there, yeah. Well done. That's Portuguese amazing. father. There detail. you go. Listen. <laughs> Portuguese father. Nice. Well, um, if you want to bring in a player who loves yellow cards, um, we <laughs> definitely do not recommend that. But uh, no, <laughs> Killian not at does. all. Not there at you go. all. But um, go for it. <laughs> and if he scores, uh, throw us a little tweet saying, do you know what? You saved my life. And I, that's okay. Well, uh, there you go. Yeah, we shall course. see. Um, very interesting, Killian. Thanks for that. Um, just quickly, lads, before we move on to our trivia round, um, Patrick, going forward, are you happy enough with your team? Um, what changes will you be making before um, the game week 23 deadly? I already have my transfer locked in, boys. There Done it go. yesterday. Out of panic that uh, I'm going to miss out on price changes, basically, because I didn't have much money in the bank. Fair. But I got out Martial and I got in and Ketia. Yeah. Pretty nice. obvious move. He's got the double, doubles again in 25. Hoping that Jesus takes that wee bit extra bit of time to recover. And uh, as long as uh, Inketi will eventually have to leave the team. But till that time, I'm happy enough to have him. Mm-hmm. Killian, what about yourself? Yes. Yeah, so I was just about to lock in, still thinking it through. Um, Martial is getting the boot. Uh, about time should have been done a wee bit ago. And I'm in between getting rid of uh, De Groen 
and taking in Mares, or mm-hmm. uh, getting rid of Almiron and maybe looking at uh, trying to set up for one of those kind of Wolves midfielders, maybe um, set up nicely for that game week 25. So I don't need to like panic transfer them coming close to that. But I think Kane. De-, De Bruyne, I think, needs to go regardless for me to bring in Kane. So, um, again, haven't locked it in yet, but that's my uh, my thought that, process. That sounds pretty good. Like, Mares is a lot mm. cheaper, and then you can use the money to upgrade Kane. To, uh, Marshall, yeah. obviously, he's going to blank in 25. Mm-hmm. So, makes yeah, sense to I me. Think, I, I think that makes complete sense. I'm actually... I haven't done my transfer yet, but I'm taking out Almiron for sure. I've definitely made that decision. Mm-hmm. And I ideally would like to bring in Mares. So when Almiron goes out, I have two million in the bank, but it's not enough to bring Mares in. You're point one short. Yeah, and there's no really other City midfielder that will cover me so i probably will look ahead and maybe go for a wolves midfielder but i'm not sure mm-hmm. yet what about jack Grealish? no what's what price is jack Grealish? Um, let me just double check i'll tell Please you hold while we check jack Grealish's price i think almiron is roughly what is almiron at the moment six or 5.6 Grealish is, is Grealish is 6.8 so you could definitely yeah. do that move well, there you go. Almiron's actually five point seven at the moment. I have two million oh, in the bank. Is he? He's so, five point six for me to transfer him out. Well, is five point six. Current price for me is five point seven. There you go. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's going to be di- cheaper. It's going to be different prices depending on what time you got him in. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, so yeah, Almiron definitely going out, planning ahead. So it'll either be a city midfielder or a cheeky Everton or Wolves pick. So there we go, lads. Uh, looking forward to game week 23. But before we finish this episode of the Minus 4 podcast, we're moving on to the trivia round. Patrick? Yes, so the trivia round this week is all about your favourite team, Darren. Oh, God. It's a Man gotcha. United question once again. But this time, a bit of a twist. Everybody. So we're, we're, we're playing another game of Guess the Footballer. And you have... It's a Man United former player and you have 10 questions to do it. And there's a time limit this time of three minutes as well. So you need to get him within 10 questions. And I have... So was it just one one player, yeah? We're it's, doing... it's one player who was a former oh Man United player. So you need to ask... Him. You have 10 questions. You is, can ask me to try and work it out. One guess Is one guess a question? Huh? Does one what? guess equivalent to a, one question? Uh, so or is it, it just it, we ask 10 and then at the end we can guess uh, each? Yeah, ask 10 and then you just have a guess each at the end. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Go for it. Right. <laughs> Does he play for Man United? <laughs> so, you have already have some information. He's a former Man United yeah. player. So you might want to try and figure out what he, what, when he did play for Man United. Does he currently play for Man United? Sorry, am I joking? Okay. Um, okay. okay. Starting, uh, okay. starting now. Three How minutes. long do we have? You have three minutes. Three minutes. Uh, is he English? No, he's not English. I'm going to take notes here. Oh, is he Wait, French? Do we have 10 questions each? Huh? Do we have 10 questions each or 10 between us? Uh, 10 between us. Okay. Oh, God. Is he French? He's not French. These are, these are terrible questions. These are like, you know, you're trying to nail hey. it at the park. Uh, was he a... Uh, Prolific goal scorer. Not for Man United, no. But maybe, maybe after. That should be a yes or no question. But. Um. So he said maybe after. So. Did Did he play for more than two years? Uh, no, he played for two years. Two years was how okay. long he played there. <gasps> I think I know who it is. Uh, he played for two years he was a good goal scorer afterwards I don't know. can I discuss with Darren yeah uh, Darren I think it might be uh, Chicharito uh, well, when what, did he what was, play what year did he play you might want to try and is figure me- out that time is no, he Mexican no he's not Mexican you're just burning <laughs> questions asking for nationalities <laughs> <laughs> oh, it down. 
Right, hold on. We have one, two, three, four, five, five <laughs> questions. So we know he's not English. He's not French. He he's was a goal Mexican. scorer. <laughs> he's Mexican. He was a goal scorer, but he was more of a goal scorer when he left Man United. Yes. He Man United yes. for a period 100%. around That's... two two years. Yep. Uh, okay. <laughs> Think of players that are good goal scorers when they left United. <laughs> Think of another country there. More questions, more generic, <laughs> generic questions. Like, uh, was he was he a striker? Yes. That was a silly question, wasn't it? Did did he play between, uh, I suppose, two thousand and two thousand ten? Yes. Okay. Just uh, trying to get match attacks. <laughs> <laughs> Right, it's 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 a striker, right? So we're thinking possibly someone like Ruud van Nistelrooy. It won't be Rooney, Berbatov there too. No, his step. head's too small to be Rooney. Oh, so that's uh, it's head it's head not head. the person that this is just a generic picture of Bruno. It's not actually. Are scared. you joking me? I've been trying to look at this fella thinking it's him. <laughs> you have. I was thinking oh. he had short hair, judging by yeah. the uh, graphic that Patrick is here. No, the gra- that's um, just a mystery man. It doesn't oh, look like move- that. Did he move on to a Premier League club after he left United? No. What about okay. Berbatov, Darren? No, no, no. It's... All right, hold on. So he moved on to a big club and he scored lots of goals for them. So we're thinking maybe Spanish League, German League. Who moved on? Many questions we have left. You have, uh, he was two, only the, two he questions was also, left. And about he was also only at United for two years. Yeah. Two questions left and he's have a guess. I'm going to have to rush his as well. For... Uh, um, did he move to the Spanish league? Yes. After Man United. Oh God. Oh my God! I can't think. Who would that have been? I mean, you one more guess. It's because he's it's, it's Spanish. That's not, the Spanish. That's not the question. Uh, That's uh, the question. Is he Spanish? No. <laughs> okay, I'm guessing. Um, oh fucking hell. See if it's Cristiano Ronaldo and you've classified him as a striker, Patrick. So my guess is Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo was there for more than two years. Yeah, it's, it's you're yeah, wrong, Darren. Right. What's your guess, Killian? Um, oh, this is terrible. Berbatov, I suppose. Berbatov I is incorrect. Unlucky boys. The correct get the answer, first letter. The correct answer was Diego Forlan. Oh, I was actually thinking of him yeah, too. There you go. So he Fucking. went to. He's not French. You could have he asked like something Torres. like. <laughs> you could have asked something like, "Is he, you know, from, you know, Europe?" So and America. then you would have, yeah, you might have yeah. nominated it then. So Where he, is he from? He was. Uruguay or Uruguay? Yeah. He was a complete flop when he came to United, though, wasn't he? Well, yeah, he got uh, he had sixty three appearances, scoring ten goals, and then he moved on to Villarreal, where he scored basically a goal every other game, and then he moved on to Atletico Madrid and was uh, pretty much just as prolific there. And during that period, he went to the World Cup in two thousand and ten, and I think he won the best player at that World Cup. He yeah, does he look like a bit of an. He does look like a bit of an Aldi version of Torres, doesn't he? <laughs> an Aldi <laughs> version of Torres, yeah. Torres himself became an Aldi version of Torres after a few years. Yeah, true as well. Yeah, after yeah, he moved Chelsea. to Chelsea, yeah. yeah. Very good. Well, good round, Patrick. Um, so that's us for game week twenty three, dads. Um, best of luck with your picks for this week. I think the deadline's on Saturday at eleven a.m. If I'm that's not right. Wrong, I think, I that's think right. you're correct. Yeah. So uh, looking forward to locking in the teams and uh, hopefully it's a good game week. Um, as per usual, we're on all our socials, YouTube and Twitter, Mendes 4 Pod. There are going to be more social platforms coming soon, so keep an eye out for them. By hopefully the way, we'll get some. I'm in cap- by the I'm way. captain in Katia this week, question mark. Oh, there we go. Bombshell at the end of the program. Just thought, just uh, pull that out of my arse now. But might, next week. <laughs> might, might just do it, you know, for the memes. Killian, who are you captaining this week? Quickly before uh, we leave. This week, I am going to captain uh, Saka. Oof. Really? You're going against Haaland uh, in a double game week? All right. Yeah, I think I'm going for Haaland. But <laughs> yeah. look, we'll see how I that plans out. <laughs> Come here. We'll chat to you next week. Uh, thanks so much for listening and hope you have a good game week. See you later. Thanks, guys. Take Bye-bye. it easy. You.